guys and welcome back to my channel. So for those of you who are new here, I am Sonia, this is my husband Ingemar and together with our daughter and baby number two who is due any day now, we are Iceland family life. So today we are going to take it back maybe six or seven months to when we were looking to sell and buy a new home here in Reykjavik and give you a little bit of a behind the scenes of the process, what the market was like and then take you on a nosy around some apartments. So Ingemar's going to give you a bit more of an insight into the crazy, I think, monopoly that the Icelandic housing market is because he will explain it far better than me. So over to you. Thank you. <laughs> so essentially when we started the process of searching for houses, the Icelandic housing market was not in a crisis but rather in a in an inflation period and when we went into it market value or market price was 20 to 30 percent above estimated value of the properties it was a seller's market which meant that we could sell our property for good money but we also have to pay hefty money for the upgrade that we got due to the inflation that had happened in housing price the government and treasury started to kick in. They did that by increasing the interest rates, which affected our mortgage negatively. It's not too bad, not yet. What it means is that, well, it took us longer to sell, but we did get good price for a property. We have the property we wanted and we got it for a little lower than it was put up for. The housing market in Iceland is a bit crazy and I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview. It's a very simple one from a layman but I hope I get the gist of it. So the market is ma was mostly based on insured loans which meant that uh, if there was inflation the loans themselves, the mortgages would rise not only the interest rate but the base of the mortgages would rise as well and this meant that you could get into real trouble real fast. There's an 80% cap or was an 80% cap that you would get the mortgage could be up to 80% of the price you had to turn out the 20% deposit and due to the rise in pricing, uh, this man means that many young people are having a hard time getting into the market. What it does mean, however, is that because of how small the market is, uh, once you're in, you're pretty much safe for a lifetime if you have earnings. If you can get an uninsured loan, that means that you will not get into as much trouble if there is inflation. And this is what happened to us. We managed to get in at the right time, just before inflation hit. And so we have uninsured loans, which means that the interest rates will go up, which will make our lives a little more difficult. But at the same time, we're not going to have to face the mortgage itself going up. We came in at a time when it was at its peak and the government and treasury kicked in with packages trying to help to stem the inflation. And what that meant is that they started by increasing the interest rates, raising them and now they've taken up action to stop people from over financing the apartments going into spending more than maybe 35 or 40 percent of their income they've taken that down so there's a limit now so if you have an x amount you can only invest 40 percent in your markets and this should slow the market down well that's the hope but they keep raising the interest rates which is going to make it more difficult for people to just pay off the loans let alone get new loans. Yeah, like I said, we got in at the opportune time as a seller's market. This meant we paid a little more for our apartment, for the one we're in now, but we got good deal on ours. And the market is still inflating because we're such a small country. They are not building enough houses and apartments for people at this time, especially here in Reykjavik, which is the biggest area of inflation because everyone wants to move here because uh, the situation in the countryside is less than good. If you have education, you're going out there, there are not many jobs you can do, and the growth is mainly within the city. We're going to cut it there. If you have any questions or anything you want to know about what it's like to buy and sell here, please do um, put them in the comments down below. But for now, we're just going to go straight into the video and have a nosy around some lovely apartments in Reykjavik. So the first apartment we viewed was actually out of town in Mossfeld Byer and it was quite a strange property. The layout was definitely something that would have to be rearranged. 
um, there I think there were two or three bedrooms here the kids bedroom didn't have a window so there'd be no natural light or ventilation and yeah it was just it was kind of built on a couple of levels you'll see in the bedroom here and in the bathroom so it was a little bit awkward it was just a very strange one um, and also a good garden a lovely size of garden but I don't really think that it was for us straight away. Uh, the, the views out of the windows here are um, not really the most pretty, but it was good to see properties outside of the city and kind of know that that wasn't for us. The second property was just on the outskirts of the city and was a much better location, much better layout and the amount of daylight and natural ventilation was beautiful. It had a balcony which was glassed in so that would be a good way of using that space a lot more. The kitchen was quite small, the bedrooms were tiny, really really small you'll see there's not much room around the bed at all um, and so I think that value for money here you're really starting to see that moving into the city you're really looking at small bedrooms and having your laundry either down in the basement is quite typical here but also in your bathroom as well so lots of storage downstairs you usually have a bike store a laundry and then a storage unit as well The next property was probably the most downtown central one that we looked at. It was a ground floor or basement um, apartment and the layout here was kind of an odd one for where the bedrooms would be because off of the living room would be our bedroom probably and then the kids room would be the first one that you approached. And then through the back of the kitchen, there was also another room which would maybe be used as a toy room or an office. This is a really solid property and a beautiful building, but inside the layout didn't really work. And I felt like the shared laundry room was right beside where your front door is, where your bathroom is, and just it didn't feel very private. You'll see here, this is where people come in from their storage and come into the shared laundry space and the bathroom is just beside that. So it was good to see a property downtown, but this was just not going to be a way out that could really work for us. It was really important to me to look at the variety of properties available within our budget. So we started looking at different areas across the city and then at different types of properties and there's a lot of blocks of apartments that look just like this that are actually built by different developers so the internal layout can be really different. This is a three bedroom apartment with a large living space, large hallway and a pretty small kitchen and bathroom. But again, you get the benefit of balcony, storage downstairs, laundry downstairs. You have to really look beyond the interior design because some of the bedrooms are very nice. But when you actually think about your lifestyle in here, that's what you have to imagine. And although the nursery can look very cute, it is a small space. And realistically, where are all the toys? Where's all the storage for all of the things? <laughs> So it was good to see and get some ideas from, but again, we weren't going to be benefiting in much more space than we already had. When I hear that an Icelander has moved home recently, I often ask them where they've moved to and it usually turns out that they've moved within a couple of blocks or streets from where they live and so naturally when this apartment came up on the market two blocks away from us, we went to look at it. 
Now this was an apartment that I really really liked the layout of, I liked the building, we already liked the location and it seemed like it had a lot of potential. This is definitely a project <laughs> when you look at the bathroom and uh, some of the interiors anyway. There's a lot of potential here, there's some good bones, but there was going to be a lot of work and so it would cost a lot of money and take a lot of time to fix up. We actually viewed this property twice and the more I kind of thought about it I realised that this wouldn't be a long term answer because the bedrooms were just too small, one was very much a nursery and we were looking for something where we could have a bit of a playroom for the kids room and also a spare room or maybe an office as well. The agent also made us aware that there was going to be some construction work needed done to the facade and balcony so we would have to pay for that straight away which was an additional cost that we hadn't budgeted into the price of this and also that there was plans to build a new apartment block right in front in the garden there and thank goodness we didn't go after this one because now driving past it is a building site. And the hunt in this neighbourhood continued. You can see the block up from the previous apartment that we viewed. We went to see as well. Now this apartment had been on the market for a while and I discovered why when I went in. It is a very interesting interior, a lot of potential here. A really really good apartment and layout of apartment but a huge damp problem and they weren't willing to fix it before and they weren't willing to reduce the price at all. So you would have a huge amount of costs to do up this apartment and it just wasn't going to be the kind of project for us. The living room space and dining room space worked quite well but again the bedrooms were very small and I felt like they were heavily overlooked by that neighbouring block there. So unfortunately privacy would be a bit of an issue and I think for the amount of money that they were asking it was just, it just wasn't going to be for us. Going to view apartments in the time of Covid was really strange because either you were given an allocated 10 minutes to look around the entire apartment and ask all of your questions or it was just a free-for-all and you had to mask up and try and distance and just sign in and out when you were doing the viewings. And quite a lot of the properties were very, very busy on the first viewing and often had already sold by the time we had left them. Things were moving very quickly. So it was, it felt like quite a lot of pressure. We were trying to not let that actually get to us. So this apartment, we took our friend who is a contractor along with us because we knew that it would go quite quickly. It was a good price, good location. One of these apartment blocks, so we knew the bedrooms would be a decent size. The benefit of moving into one of these kind of tower block, apartment block or shared block units is that any bills and work that is needed done to the building is shared between all of the neighbours and so we looked into what was needed done in this apartment block and unfortunately there were some problems with the drainage or it was the original drainage and there was some issues so we knew that that would cost a lot of money and we could see how much was in the housing fund. It wasn't enough and so we would also have to budget for that as well. However, the agent phoned us the very next day and asked if we were interested in putting in an offer because probably there was already an offer on the table and she was just testing the water to see how much they could stretch. But it sold immediately, so things were moving fast.
This property is actually in down on the coast near Grandy and it's an area where we like to take drives and go for family walks so we wanted to have a look at the area and see what we were getting for our money because this is a bit of a higher price kind of location and it was definitely an interesting property. It was top floor so lots of stairs. It was a kind of two floor property which really was an attic conversion. He has managed to somehow squash three bedrooms into this attic space but it was very much like living in a corridor. A spiral staircase, beautiful architectural feature but probably not great for a toddler and a, a baby. And this living dining kitchen space was just a little bit too much of a squash for us. The outside space, nice. You got a little bit of a view of the ocean there, but for the amount of money, you are just paying for the location. The next apartment was one of those apartments which is absolutely finished, ready to move in but it's just not done up to your taste so unfortunately I just I didn't really like that we'd be paying for someone else's style I far prefer to go into a place and have it your project you can do yourself um, there were a few different issues with the actual building here and the agent didn't seem at all interested to discuss them probably didn't like that I was bringing them to anyone else's attention as well. Um, this was a little bit of a snooty experience which I just didn't take to and yeah unfortunately great building, probably over budget for what it was and we just had a nosy and then headed back home again. And last but not least, because this was definitely not the 10th apartment that we viewed, I viewed a lot, this was the one that we went after. This is our beautiful new home. So when I looked at it online, I just knew this was the one. I went in for very first viewing, walked into the living room, went onto the balcony and then spoke to Ella, Ingemar's sister, about what fees were and tried to figure out what our offer could be. So it is a fantastic apartment, a lot of potential here. Big living room, dining room space, kitchen that can definitely be pulled out at some point. Bonus of a utility room, big mess room, close the door, hide it all. And then it's got two bedrooms, which the children's bedroom has been opened up into one room so it has potential to be split back into two rooms again so it is a three bedroom property and there is a bathroom with a bathtub just ticked every box for us I felt very at home in here and could see the potential within this apartment so it was time to call the agent put in our offer cross everything and see what happened Thank you.